Hey, what's up guys? It's Play Gaming for Fun, and today we have a tutorial on how to get some good quality out of the Sabrent using free software. Now, we're going to be using AMCAP. A lot of people use Virtual Dub. I don't like Virtual Dub. Oftentimes, the video that I get out of it is laggy and icky, so I use AMCAP to record. So now, AMCAP, it's free. You see I'm using the demo version. Yes, it's the demo version, but really it's not. It's pretty much the full version. If you want to get the full version... You won't really get anything other than the fact that you'll be donating to the developer. So under devices, we will check Sabrent because that's what you're using. If it says like BDA capture card or something like that, it's because you have the wrong drivers installed. The manual tells you to install the x84. That's what the manual says. But for me, that didn't work. I had to uninstall them. And I had to instead install the x64 drivers or something like that. Now, also under devices, make sure you have none checked rather than microphone unless you actually want to record your commentary right then and there. But I suggest you do it later on and then add it in in Windows Movie Maker or something. And if you do it later on, you'll want to use like Audacity or something to record the audio later on. Um, you also want to make sure that capture audio from video source is checked if you do plan on cop capturing the game audio because that's how you're going to get the game audio. There's a few other things you have to do in order to get the game audio as well. Under options, you want to uncheck preview if you have not already. Trying to record gameplay with the preview on on the Sabrent will not, it won't let you do that. It'll just error, error, error. So you want to make sure preview is unchecked. Now, video capture filter underneath options, we're going to want to click on. And make sure you have NTSCM or NTSCMJ if you're in. Uh, North America, if you're in Europe, you want to use PAL, you know, whatever your uh, region is, that depends on which one of these you want to use. If your screen is black and white, it's because you're using the wrong region. If your screen is in color, if you just turn on the preview for just a second, see if your screen's in color, that would mean you have the right region. Now, I don't check either of those. Go into this video proc amp. Uh, I always mess with the brightness and contrast depending on what I'm recording. You can turn on the preview, but you can't record with the preview on. So sometimes it it is useful to turn the preview that I talked about earlier on, you know, to mess with the color, and then you can see what what exactly you're messing with. Otherwise, leaving it at default normally is not that bad. So again, the preview things right here, you can't have it on when you're recording, but if you're not recording, you can have it on. That's okay. Um, we're going into video capture pin underneath options. Uh, click up on the frame rate, just make sure it's maxed out. The color space, this is your only option, UI, VY. And make sure the output size is 720 by 480. You can't go any higher than that. And then you want to go down to under options, you want to go to video or crossbar video input. Make sure you have whichever one you're using picked. So I'm using video S video. I had to buy a special cord in order to do that. If you don't know which one you're using, you're probably using video composite. And again, if your screen's black and white on the preview, it's because you're using the wrong one. Now, crossbar audio input, make sure you have audio line checked. Now we go under capture, make sure capture audio is checked again if you want to obviously record the audio. Under master stream, make sure video is checked because you want the video quality to be as good as it can do the audio, that's second hand. You aren't as worried about that. Under compression, make sure WMV9 is checked and go to setup under, what are we under? We're under capture. And now go to compression tab, make sure Windows Media 9 series compression is picked. That's the one I always use. And because you're using the Windows Media 9, you can skip by this whole box right here with the AVI compression options. And we go down to this box. I use video quality as higher which is vbr 97 i don't even know what that means but the higher the vbr number the better the quality and i keep it at higher rather than highest because highest isn't really that much better and it takes up way more space and audio quality i keep that at the top because it doesn't really matter with the audio quality it doesn't affect the file size that badly now under window make sure you have maintain aspect ratio checked right here and that is it you can capture now you'll get your recording It'll have a timestamp on it unless you change that. And well, what I mean, what I mean by timestamp is it'll say like whatever day you record, it'll have that date as a file name. So then, you know, it'll be a strangely named file, but that'll be your recording. 
and you'll want to go into something like Windows Live Movie Maker is probably the best free editor you can get. So you'll want to go into that and let me just drag in a recording I have from earlier. Okay, so it opens it up. I can take stuff off the front here because it is frozen a little bit at the beginning. So I would trim that off using the split tool. And whatever you use, do not change this to 16.9 under project. Do not change it to widescreen. Just keep it at standard and you'll be fine. If you want to add music, obviously add music. And well, basically the music could be your commentary. And and then you just want to go in here, save movie, make sure you pick for computer rather than for high definition display because that'll make it uh, be widescreen. You don't want widescreen. We'll convert to widescreen later. So let's just pretend I exported this video. Say no here. And if I obviously would have actually been making the video, I'd have said yes. And then we go into a Vidimux. I have the portable version. I'll put links for both the portable and the regular install below. And then I'll need to open up my video in here, which I happen to already close the video. Okay, so we get the video in here. So Vidimux is indexing the video. This basically means that it's loading. And now once it gets loaded, we will show you what filters you need to put on this video. And then the filters are going to resize it to make it be widescreen. It's going to make it appear HD to viewers. And on mobile devices, I think this really improves it. Now, this is how my quality gets so good. It's because of the widescreen I'm going to do in here. Under video output in a Vidimux, you want to change the word copy to MPG4 ASP XVID4. And then click on filters. And then you want to go to transform. Double click on crop. And then normally you can auto crop. You're seeing right here it doesn't work. It might work for you. Auto crop is pretty convenient. But otherwise, you just got to go click up here. The green is what you're erasing. You want to go get the green all over the black. This way it can be erased. So I've got the green covering up the black. So we hit OK. We got that cropped off. Now we want to go to SWS resize. Double click on that. Uncheck lock aspect ratio. Change the width to 1280. And the height to 720, this is going to get it to be widescreen, look HD. If you click on preview down here, you can see that this is, in fact, a bigger image, decently clear, and it's going to look HD. Now, if you click close, get out of that, you got, just check again, you got all your filters in here. The two active filters are right there. Now, under audio, this is very important if you're going to have audio. You want to change the word copy to MP3 lame. And then go to filters and make sure that stereo is selected here. If it says mono, that isn't that bad of a thing. It'll just sound a little bit worse, but you can't actually change it. So it should be at stereo by default. Now you're done. You just want to click save. You're done with your video. It's all edited. You can upload to YouTube. It'll be 720. It'll look good. And that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching. If you got any questions, leave me a comment or leave me a message. All right, bye.